Hey guys, how's it going? Chris Arell here. Today's video, I hope, is going to be fairly interesting to most of you guys. We are going to implement serialization or saving into our inventory system so that when you leave the game and you come back in, all of your inventory items and equipment is just the way that you left them. I'm going to give you a brief overview of all of the changes that are going to take place and then we'll go more in depth into each of those to implement the system step by step. There's a lot to cover, so this will be broken down into two parts. First of all, we'll need a way to save data to files. So that comes in in our file read write class that implements two methods, write to binary file and read from binary file. The name of the functions and the code in them is pretty self-explanatory. Then we'll need to create a few classes that will contain the actual data that we want to save to files. We want to save items and their amounts. After that, we'll implement a class that glues both of these together, which simply implements two methods, one for saving and one for loading, that receives or returns our save data from the path that we choose. Then we'll make the item save manager. This will be used to convert our items into the correct format for saving, and vice versa, it will read from the files and convert them to items that we can use in the game. It will be able to do this for both the inventory items and equipment items. And this will be the end of the first part. After that, in order to convert our saved item IDs, we'll need to also implement the item database. This, as the name implies, will store a list of all the items that we have available in our game so that we can retrieve them by simply supplying the respective ID. And finally, we'll make use of our item save manager in the character script to save and load our equipment and inventory. So let's get right into it and start by creating a new folder. In this folder, create our file read write script. This is going to be a static class with only static methods. I'm going to copy those methods from my notes because they are pretty self explanatory. We just need to import the system.io namespace and the binary formatter namespace. This will write an object of any type to the file path that you choose. First, we need to open the file using file mode.create. This will create the file if it doesn't exist or overwrite it if it does already exist. Then we create a new object of type binary formatter and we use it to convert our data into binary and then write it to the file. To use the binary formatter class, we need to include this enormous using statement up here at the top. The read method works very similarly, where we open up a file, we read from that file, convert it into the object of the type that we chose, and then return it. By wrapping our file.open calls in these using statements, it will automatically close the file when the using statement ends. This saves us from having to call stream.close explicitly. Now let's create the classes to represent our save data. I'm going to simply call the file item save data. We can start by deleting the entire contents of that file. Then let's use the system namespace. We'll create a new class, and this class will represent the data that we need to save for one item slot. We want to save the ID of the item in that slot and the amount, in case it's a stack with several items. In order for this class to be used for saving and writing to files, we need to have the serializable property above it. Before we move on, let's discuss the two ways that we could use to save our items. As always, none of these ways is strictly better than the other, they simply have advantages and disadvantages. So the first way is the way that I chose to do it which is by saving only item IDs. The second way is to save the item object in its entirety. One advantage of this way is that if we decide to allow players to modify items to their liking, like by adding enchantments or gems, for example, by saving the item object in its entirety, we will automatically be saving these enchantments without any extra work on our part. As opposed to the first method, where we're only saving item IDs, and the item IDs are only referring to the original item without any custom player modifications. 
So if we're using the first method, and we need to allow players to make custom modifications to their items, we'll need to add a few extra variables to the save data in order to cover that. On the other hand, this first method also has a few advantages of its own. First of all, probably the most obvious one, is that it's simply less data to save. It's just a simple string. Another advantage is that if we decide to update our game with a patch that changes the properties of some items, by saving only the item ID, as long as the items are updated in the game files, we will retrieve the updated item by using its ID without any extra work on our part. As opposed to the second method, where we saved the entire item object, meaning that we saved the item object in the state that it was before we updated our game files. So we would need some extra code that would run at the moment where we load a save file to also update the items in that save file. Given both of these scenarios, I personally prefer the first method where we save only the item IDs. So let's continue with our implementation. We have the class that's going to hold the data that we need to save for each item slot, and now let's create a class to represent the data that we need to save for an entire inventory or equipment panel. Essentially, it's just an array of item slot save data. Let's also implement some constructors to these classes to make them easier to use. After this, let's make our item save IO class. This is going to be a static class as well, and it's going to serve as the connecting point between our file read write class and our item save data classes. The correct folder to save files in Unity is given by application.persistentdatapath. Let's cache that value in a static constructor. A static constructor is a special kind of constructor in C Sharp that will run automatically the first time any static method or variable is accessed from that class. Here we'll create two methods, one that will save our items to a file and the other to load them back from a file. The save method will receive the item container save data object that we want to save and the file name where we want to save it to. It will then join the base save path with the file name that we specified, adding the dat extension, short for data, to create the full save path of the file. It will then write the item container save data object to that path using the write to binary file method from our file read write class. The load items method will return an object of type item container save data. It will then construct the full file path from the file name that we gave it and our base save path, verify if the file that we want exists. If it does, it will read the item container save data object from that file and return it to us. Otherwise, it will return null. After this is done, let's move on to our item save manager. This will be the class that converts our player's inventory and equipment panel into the savable format and then calls the corresponding methods to save them into files. For now, we know that we want essentially two different files, one for the inventory and another for the equipment panel. So let's make two variables for that. So let's start by saving items. If we think about it, saving items in the inventory and the equipment panel should be about the same thing. It's just a matter of converting their item slots into our item container save data format. So let's create a method that does exactly that. It will receive either a list or an array of item slots, a file name, then convert those item slots into our item container save data format and save it into a file. This will receive an argument of type iList item slot. iList is an interface that is implemented both by arrays and lists. This means that if we use an argument of this type, we can pass into this function either an array or a list and it will work exactly the same way. This makes our code more generic, which is a very good thing. So first, we'll need to create a new item container save data object. Then we'll need to loop through all of our item slots, convert each one of them into an item slot save data, assign that to the array of our save data variable, and lastly, save it into a file. 
So for each item slot, if it is null, we will also assign null to the corresponding index in the saved slots array. Otherwise, we will create a new item slot save data object and assign that instead. And now we'll need to create a method that specifically saves items from the inventory and another method that saves items from the equipment panel. These methods will need to be public because we will be calling them from the character script. However, the character's inventory is a private variable. So let's go into the character script and change it right now. Both of the inventory and the equipment panel will need to be public so that we can access them from our saving script. For consistency, we'll also change their variable names to uppercase because that's the C-sharp convention. Public fields have uppercase names. Unfortunately, this will probably cause the references in the inspector to be lost, but we can easily assign them again by simply dragging and dropping in the hierarchy. We now have access to the inventory. However, we need access to the slots in the inventory as well. And that is also a private variable. So let's go into the inventory script. The variable that we want is actually in the item container class. And let's change the item slots variable into public instead of protected. Similarly, since this is now public, we'll also rename it to have an uppercase name. We also need to do the same in the equipment panel by making the equipment slots variable public. Also changing its name for consistency with naming conventions. Back in our save manager script, we can now access the item slots so that we can save them into the file. So we need to use the save items method, passing in the inventory item slots and the inventory file name constant variable that we created earlier. To save the equipment panel, it's essentially the same thing. We'll use the save items method, passing in the equipment slots from the equipment panel and the equipment file name. So now let's work on loading the inventory. First, we'll need to load our item container save data from the inventory file. If this returns null, it means that there's no save file yet. So we can just return early from the method and we don't need to do anything else. Otherwise, we'll need to clear our inventory, removing any items that might be there, and then loop through all of our saved slots, converting them into actual items and assigning them to the item slots. To make our code more readable, let's start by assigning our current item slot and our current saved item slot into variables. Then we'll check if our saved item slot is null. And if it is, we can assign the item slot's item to also be null. And in that case, the amount in that slot is, of course, also going to be zero. If our saved slot isn't null, we'll need to retrieve the item that corresponds to the saved ID and assign it to that slot and assign the amount as well. However, we still don't have any way currently to retrieve an item that corresponds to a given ID. So let's leave this blank for now and we'll come back to this in the next episode. To load the equipment panel, we'll need to do a very similar process, although with a few differences. It starts out exactly the same. We'll try to load the items from the equipment file and if the file doesn't exist, we can return early from the method. If the file does exist, we'll need to loop through all of our saved slots and add them to the equipment panel. However, in this case, we can't add those items directly to the equipment panel slots. We will need to call the equip method on the character script in order for the stats of those items to be applied to the player. If the saved slot is null, we can immediately continue to the next one. There's nothing we can do. If it isn't null, we need to retrieve that item which we still don't know how to do. We'll get to it in the next episode. For now, let's just assign null so that we avoid errors from Visual Studio. And here we'll want to call the character's equip method. But once again, that method is private. So let's go into the character script and change it to public. We'll need to give that method the item that we retrieved, casting it to equipable item. 
but if we take a closer look at the equipment method, it requires us to have the item that we want to equip in our inventory. If it cannot remove the item from the inventory, then nothing will happen. Ideally, we would change this method to allow us to equip items from anywhere, not just from the inventory. However, that is outside the scope of this video, so we'll need to come back to that later. For now, we will use a workaround, which is adding the item to the inventory before equipping it. So this completes our item save manager, and with it the first episode of our saving system implementation. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers! Thank you.